What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Corvus OS which is based on Android 11 and as you can see this is the Corvus version 13 and this is the latest one as of right now the version name is Exalted and here it says official build of course and the build date if you're noticing is 23rd January 2021. So this is the latest build as of right now and it is based on MIUI vendor as far as I know and of course there are two separate versions as usual one includes the gapps and one doesn't and here i have flashed the included gapps version and of course you need the latest miui vendor to flash this rom and you can click on the card right over there on the corner if you don't know how to flash this rom now quick note here that my drm info has turned l3 because i have flashed persist image earlier but for you it won't be the case the drm info will be l1 if you have not broken it now talking about other stuff like the banking apps and stuff i'm gonna like do it in the beginning of this video because i think this is pretty important for some people and here banking app should be working fine too and as you can see the safety net test completely passes and that means you can use google pay or any other banking apps on this rom without any worries and this is how the about section looks like as you can see and you have the Corvus logo up top there and Android version is Android 11 of course as you are noticing here I hope it appears as you can see this is Android 11 of course and the Corvus version here it says exalted and the maintainer's name is Ritz and in the phone specifications it still shows 5 GB for some reason I do not know why and here as you can see the security patch is latest of January 5th 2021 and here if you scroll down the build date again is 21st january the slinux status is enforcing and the stock kernel is still per g kernel now in the system settings this is how it looks like still we do not get any system updater here but yes of course if you were on the previous build you can definitely dirty flash it or manually update it if you don't know how to manually update click on the card right over there and here in the gestures let me show you in the gesture navigations in the settings we have the gesture bar length as you are noticing and we have the dead zone then right left edge customization is there and there is the haptic feedback you can turn it on if you like it and there is the two button and three button navigations too let me go back we have the swipe to deck screenshot and this feature of course works fine no issues with that and here let me go back we also have this power menu here but again all the customizations like the advanced reboot and stuff is in the customization section not here in the system and here we have the quickly open camera so you can enable it if you want to let me go back and we have this front camera sound effects and you can disable this sound if you need as you can see but there is no star wars kind of sound these are all the sounds you can get like for the front camera and the camera led and stuff you can turn it off if you don't like it and the stock keyboard here is google keyboard still now i have been using this corvus 13 for about two to three days now and in my experience i would say the rom is still amazing and here you get the stock camera as the anx camera as you are noticing and here as you can see the front camera and stuff everything is working fine no issues with that but yes portrait mode is of course still broken because that's like the anx camera sides issue so not actually fixable as of right now i guess and there is the like wide angle camera and the telephoto camera and both of them are working fine and you can take videos up to like 4k 60 fps as you are noticing with the back cameras and if you switch the front camera as you can see you can shoot up to 1080p 30 fps as you can see this is how the recent panel looks like if you are noticing and here interestingly there is the screenshot option and if you are noticing there is the clear all button and there is the force close this force close means whatever app you are seeing here if you tap on the force close it will just close that particular app from memory so that's how it is and there is the share button this is just for like quickly sharing the screen over here like sharing this particular app what you are viewing so yeah you can share that screenshot with someone or you can take a screenshot and save it in the like file explorer if you want to share it later so yeah that's all we have for the recent panel and here in the home screen as you can see this is the raven launcher present by default and if you go to the settings of the stock launcher we have a bunch of things like the suggestions you can disable that's what i like and here we have the hidden and protected apps and also i have locked some particular apps let me show you here as you can see you can go to the settings of it by just tapping on the fingerprint scanner and right now i'm in the settings and from here i have locked a couple of apps like telegram and stuff here as you can see i have also locked whatsapp and again this 
if you tap on this lock icon that means it will lock or unlock depending on the situation let me go back from here also there is the double tap to sleep anywhere on the home screen so this is a really great launcher in my opinion it has the google's discover page to the left side of the home screen and still you can double tap anywhere on the home screen and as you can see it makes the phone sleep this is how the always on display looks like by default and let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed quickly so yep as you are noticing the fingerprint scanner is fairly fairly fast no issues with that very reliable fingerprint scanner experience i have been getting and even with night light it works flawlessly now on the stock launcher again you can swipe up to get the app drawer and you can search for particular apps just like this as you can see and you can swipe down anywhere to get the quick settings panel and widgets are working totally fine here now again once you lock a particular app this is how it will look like it will say protected app then when you tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it opens right now let me just talk about the customizations well in terms of the customizations it is pretty similar that it was earlier i would say let me go into the ravens layer as you can see you get this system then lock screen then you get the status bar and then you get the hardware customization now i'm not going to show you all of them because these are pretty similar but the only thing i would say is kind of missing as of right now is the fingerprint scanner animation that you cannot choose so that's one thing that you need to keep in mind i'm, I'm going to show you the animation stuff a little bit later but let me actually explain you get the fingerprint icons over here as you can see but you cannot really choose the fingerprint scanner animation over here like the cyberpunk 2077 or something that is present like those are present on evolution x roms and other roms and here that's not present you cannot really choose there is only one single animation that appears when you turn on this fingerprint scanner animation option and one more thing that i could not find here is that like the brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar that feature is also missing over here so if you're someone who uses that feature that is missing but yes definitely you can customize or like turn down or up the brightness with the quick settings panel very easily there is no like always unlock with the fingerprint scanner as of right now like the force fingerprint option is completely missing from here other than that of course there is the battery option then there is the clock option and inside icon manager of course you can choose the vaulty icons over here as you are noticing and also there is the vo wi-fi icons but i don't have vo wi-fi turned on as of right now but yes that works fine no issues with that and in the quick settings panel we have this quick setting tint brightness slider and the vibrate on toggle touch quick settings cool down and stuff but even in this brightness slider as you are noticing there is no option to that gesture control for the brightness on the status bar and inside buttons we have these many features like the screen of power and toggle torch those are fine and inside navigation and stuff we have some options and there is the advanced reboot so let me show you this is how the power menu looks like by default and as you can see you can choose like your smart home lights from here or any other smart home devices you can add and if you tap on restart as you can see you can directly reboot to recovery or fast boot from here now from inside raven's themes and here we have the font customization plethora of fonts that you get no issues you will be having and inside accent color picker you can of course pick any accent color that you like and there is the icon shapes as you are noticing plethora of icon shapes are there then we have the status bar icon set you can choose any of them and then quick setting header style you can change that too and from here you have the switch style so these are the toggles in the settings you can change that let me scroll down we have the system theme so i have set it to pitch black but you can use with google dark or something if you like it that way or there is a corvus clear too choco x baked green etc options are also there and you can schedule it that's a good thing let me go back we have the battery option now here is how the battery section looks like i like that it has these kind of icons over here looks very cool in my eyes and as you can see you can tap here to see the full usage and i would say the battery life has been good enough as you can see i have got about 4 hours and 22 minutes of screen on time i have used the phone a little bit heavily but yes the battery life should be definitely good enough you can get six to seven hours of screen on time easily on this rom and there is the thermal profiles battery saver battery manager etc and of course you can see the design battery capacity current battery capacity and the charging cycles also there is a battery temperature now inside display settings we have this kind of look but here one thing that i do not like some has the icons some doesn't simply so looks a little bit weird in the display settings i would say as you can see these options just shows blank it should have been like there should have been an icon i would say for some settings like the dark theme and stuff and we have the night light option adaptive brightness or auto brightness inside styles and wallpapers this is how it looks like by the way the wallpaper i'm using is from the wallp app i'll put the link for that in the description box below in the grid option we have up to five by five customization and in the clock section there is the like lock screen clock style presets you can customize that 
Let me scroll down. We have the font size, display size, the DPI, and then inside lock screen, we have this always show time and info. That means this is the always on display. You can turn it off if you want to. And double tap to wake and stuff still is there. And there is the anti flicker or DC dimming mode. Works fine. Now onto the sound settings, this is how it looks like and this is how the volume panel looks like by default as you can see, you can expand it just like this. Right now I have a Bluetooth device connected so it's showing this Bluetooth icon over here and here we have this Mi Audio Jack and with that, with the EU Edition actually the sound quality via the headphone jack is great, no issues I have had with this like ROM with audio quality, the audio quality or the music quality is great via headphones or you can enable this hi-fi audio option too if you have a great headphone or something. And there is the screenshot sound, touch sound, touch vibration, disabling option. And of course, if you scroll up, we have the vibrate for calls and link notification and volume stuff. Let me scroll down. We have the security option and here is the fingerprint option. And of course, I have set up two fingerprints and that are those are working fine. And right now, let me just try the face unlock. So let's just quickly set up the face unlock, even though I have some obstacles here. It took some time, but it did set up the face unlock. Right now, let me just try it by double tapping here. And as you can see, it unlocks. So it pops out the front camera whenever I double tap and it unlocks. So very fast and reliable thing like face unlock I would say. I was about to say finger bit scanner. Here let me open this. Okay so the app lock does not work actually with the face unlock. So that's how it is. You have to either use the pin or the fingerprint. And here is how the options are there like for the face unlock particularly. Now onto the quick settings panel. This is how it looks like. Almost forgot to show you guys the quick settings panel. Now let me jump into this edit option and here we have the airplane mode, location and stuff. Then this audio mode, everything is there as you are noticing over here. These are the toggles that are there. But I don't really see the FPS info option over here. Do you guys see it? I don't. For some reason I cannot find the FPS info option over here that I can say. But of course there is the Android 11 screen recorder with that you can record the device audio and the microphone audio both at the same time. And of course there is like other toggles like bit time mode, DC dimming etc. Also there is this reboot toggle so you can like choose whatever you want like reboot to recovery or normal reboot. If you see recovery if you tap and hold on it it will reboot to recovery. So that's how it works. This power menu toggle is very like helpful for some people and it works fine. Now talking about the daily driving performance, well I'm not gonna show you the app open up speeds because it's pretty similar to the previous build and it has been improved a little bit and the performance, I have had no issues with that. The performance is great of the whole UI. It is very very smooth experience overall. As you can see vaulty calling and stuff, everything is working fine but yes this is a pixel dialer so no call recording option over here. And if you guys wanna look at the benchmarks, here are the benchmarks for this particular ROM or for this particular build. So that wraps up this video guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think and please share this video with your friends if they like Corvus ROM on their Redmi K20 Pros and if they want to try it out, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD Index signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.